This only conference will now be recorded. Okay, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hi, thanks for joining. Um, my name is Janelle Denzin. I uh, use she, her pronouns, and I work at COHIO, Coalition on Homelessness and Housing in Ohio. Um, I've been using R for two years now, and in my case, it has allowed me to almost completely rewrite all of my custom reports. Still working to get to 100%. Uh, I work on an HMIS team of four, and we are the HMIS lead for the Ohio Balance Estate and the HMIS admin for the Youngstown COC. This is uh, this series is week one of five, and a few HMIS admins who are also using R have been supportive in reviewing content. Uh, and thanks to uh, yeah, thanks to all of them for their their help with that. Um, these slides were created in R Markdown using IO slides, um, but that's not really what we're here to talk about. Um, we're, we're not going to cover that today. Um, but you, you may notice oh, the resources document, uh, which is on the GitHub page, which I'll link to um, later in the slides. All right. So um, we only, now we have, this is a redo recording. <laughs> uh, and so because the first uh, round of week one didn't actually record correctly, so we have um, someone from uh, out in the land <laughs> it, um, who is um, going to be on today. And so this is just more of a one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm, I'm recording it in order, to, um, in order to share this with other folks who had to miss the week one. So um, I don't know if you want to intro yourself or you, you just want me to just go on <laughs> just let me know i'm happy to i appreciate you making the time and redoing this and recording it for other folks too um, my name is matt richard and i work for the metro denver homeless initiative uh, which is both the coc lead and the hmis lead uh, for the seven county metro denver uh, continuum of care great thanks matt so um i'm assuming you've got your you have installed r in our studio on your machine I am hurriedly doing that right now. Um, okay. In our studio is it is the new version. Um, looks like IDE 1.3. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. That sounds right. And just yeah, the free one. Um, you already installed R, correct? That is also uh, very hastily being done uh, as we speak. Okay. I think you have to do the one before the other. So just so okay. you know. Um, but yeah, okay, good. So um, you have time. We are not gonna need it until I'm done with the slides. So it should be fine. Don't make me worry about that. Okay. Someone's mowing their lawn and sorry if you are hearing it. Um, okay, good. Um, and do you have two monitors, Matt? I've got three monitors because I need all of the screens possible. So I'm, I'm good to watch you and kind of do stuff on the side. Excellent. Great. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, this is week one of five. And um, today is going to be quite different from the other weeks. Uh, you'll see how in a second. Um, basically, when I was first asked to do something like this, I felt like I couldn't add much to all the well done and free our training materials that already exist. Uh, so I kind of ducked out of that. Um, then I was asked again, and I felt like there's real interest and maybe I can hold that door open, help folks through. Uh, so I thought about what would have helped me the most in my early days, and the obvious answer to that was workflow. Um, all the R beginner courses were good at teaching syntax and concepts, and you need that, but without an understanding of workflow, I was mystified and unsure of myself quite a bit. Um, and our specific workflow, meaning ours as HMIS admins, um, and the topic of our data is so far off of what most tutorial examples 
uh, use that I feel like bridging this can be more of my role here across the five weeks. Um, so that said, without some basic grounding and working in the R language, any talk of workflow won't make much sense. So this week will be, uh, in this week, this day, particular hour, <laughs> will be entirely about working in R. Um, we'll learn enough to get you started, and then next week we'll build on the knowledge you gain this week and get some more of how R can fit into your HMIS admin life. So what is R? R is a language and environment for statistical computing and graphics. It's a free and open source project. Um, it comes from the, the S language, um, which was developed at Bell Labs in the 80s. Um, R was developed in 1993, I think. And everything about R um, that you need to know would be at r-project.org. And if you go to the about page, you can read more about the language and the history of it and, and the um, current maintaining of it um, is done by the R Consortium and they have a, an annual conference called, uh, I think it's Use R. <laughs> and that's another thing in the R community, um, you will see multiple times where, you know, the, the letter R gets like thrown around into words um, cleverly and not so cleverly in many, many cases. But anyway, it's um, sort of an inside joke, I guess, or I don't know, it's just a joke. But um, so you'll see that sometimes. Uh, so why, why R um, versus, you know, versus other languages? Uh, there's a lot of languages that can, that can um, wrangle data like we need to do as HMIS admins. Um, Python being one, uh, there, you know, there are plenty others, um, but one reason uh, that R is good is that it was built for data and statistics, whereas, say, Python has sort of a broader purpose, and um, any data wrangling that you do in Python is, is uh, because of packages that were written to run on Python, um, whereas all of the data wrangling capabilities in R are um, baked into the language, the base language. Um, so that's one reason. I, it doesn't really matter that much. And that's another thing is like the R community and the Python community, a lot of us use both. And there's, there's not a whole lot of like animosity that I've seen, you know, like Python's the worst, R is terrible. There's just not that. I don't feel that, I don't know. Um, and then the other thing that I um, that is important to know about R is that it's been gaining popularity recently due to its intentional approach to creating and maintaining a friendly and diverse community around the language, which makes a big difference to us because we're pretty diverse ourselves. And a lot of us don't come from academia or um, science backgrounds or things like this. Um, so it's it's they're trying to do less gatekeeping and more uh, welcoming and trying to make R as accessible uh, as possible to people who haven't coded before. Uh, so why R for HMIS? Um, we as HMIS admins need more efficient and reliable ways to shape our data without restrictions. Um, we worry about losing work in legacy systems. So that whether you're switching vendors or whether you're um, like your vendor is switching reporting tools or whatever is happening that you really don't have much control over, um, you uh, having your data out of HMIS and your code base in a separate um, domain than stuck inside of your software um, is, a, is sometimes really helpful. Also, it's free-ish. Um, and we want ways of sharing our data and our, our ideas, well, not our data, gosh, not our data, but our ideas and our code uh, with each other. Like each COC does not need to independently build uh, the same reports and systems that, you know, across the US <laughs> to do the same things. So um, we can work together. 
So what is our studio? Our studio is an IDE, um, which is an integrated development environment. And it's basically an ecosystem for your code. Uh, so you notice here I have sort of a picture of an art studio um, at, because metaphorically it just reminds me of sort of what an IDE is. Um, you have like all these organizational um, features, supplies, materials, and then a big, nice big workspace to do your work, plenty of lighting, looks comfortable. Um, so that just kind of reminds me of our studio. So anyway, um, so I mentioned before that um, my, my aim here is to sort of get you going in R, but um, that, that a lot of the learning of the syntax is going to fall on you um, because I'm really going to worry more about uh, like aligning workflow concepts to HMIS admin work. Um, so I wanted to outline um, some ways to learn R um, so that you can use those resources to um, improve on syntax. So these are some of those. That is in the, um, that is in, on the GitHub page, which I'll share, um, I'll share, I'll put this in, hmm. I will add this into the chat, but people won't see that on the video. Anyway, I, I will put it on the, the GitHub page and, and I'll link to that. Okay, so well, let's uh, let's do some some demoing. Did you did you get your R and R Studio installed? Okay, Matt. I believe so. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. Yay. Okay, so um, I don't know if you agreed to let R put a, a desktop icon on your <laughs> on your um, desktop. Did you? I didn't. I'm icon averse myself, but I can yeah. icon it up pretty easily. So. Good work. Okay. That's what I was going to say is we, you don't need to do that. Um, and I'm going to close that too. So the way, to, if, if you didn't allow it to put our studio on your desktop, um, you can go, if you're, I don't know, if, are you on Windows or Mac? I'm on Windows. Okay, so you can go to your start menu and type um, RST and just open it that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it remembered. I wanted it to look, okay. <laughs> so, okay. I didn't want it to open in a project already. Close project. Okay, this is what yours should look like. Um, okay. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Except you have like a dark mode in your console and mine is not that yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's and and actually um in the week one I is um I gave a minute because when I did a run through with my son on this, he was like, uh the first thing I did when I got on here is I took a break from what you were saying and went in the tools and figured out how to change my <laughs> look of this. <laughs> So I left a space in there so that people can do that. So if you go to tools and global options and appearance, um, I just gave people a minute to find one they like. Oh. Um, I'm using Pastel on Dark. I started out when I first started coding, I, I did chaos, um, but it doesn't, you know, it's just like good to find something that you can you can manage not burn out your eyes for sure i'll stick with ambience for now to keep it moving but i'll play around this is neat thanks for telling me about it yeah all right okay so we're uh we're going to um code some things in r so you have um your console here and this is your r console and i just want to make sure that in your um top right pane you have your environment pane um, selected. I don't know where it defaults to when you first open our studio for the first time, but you have that. Environment, yeah, environment's up. Good. 
All right. So there, our first um, thing we're going to do in R is just some basic uh, arithmetic. So just type uh, 15 space plus space 7 and hit enter. And you should see that it adds those numbers together for you and returns the answer. Mm -hmm. And then, so, uh, you know, like that's not super exciting. We can all add that. Um, and we have calculators for things that we can't add. Um, so, uh, the pro you know, programming is supposed to help us eliminate repetition. Um, so what we're gonna do next is ass uh, assign 15 plus seven to um, a variable. So in R, you have what's called the assignment operator. Um, and it's basically a left arrow. So we're gonna name our first variable first bar. And then um, because you're in our studio, if you do alt dash, it will put in a space, a left, I mean a less than and a dash and another space for you. Or you can just type, you know, the four characters if you want, the space and all that. But that's a quick way to do that. Um, and then just type your 15 plus seven and then hit enter. And you would note, you should notice two things. One is your um, your first var. Hey, Matt, can you um, mute? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. Your first var uh, variable uh, landed in the environment tab and it's, it's sitting there and it's got a 22 in it. And if you wanted to uh, ask R what, what is in first var, you can type that and hit enter and it'll tell you. So the, the, the thing that I'm pointing out here too is that when you assigned 15 plus seven to first bar, it didn't come back and tell you what first bar was. Um, you had to kind of then ask, right? Um, and the reason is you didn't ask it anything, you told it to do a thing and it did it. So um, when, we, when we said 15 plus seven, that's asking R to do a thing. Um, but when we assigned that uh, 15 plus seven to first bar, we're just giving it an instruction, it carries it out and that's done. Um, so, but if you did want to do the two things at the once, let's say you wanted to assign the 15 plus seven to first bar and you wanted it to also give you the output, then you can surround your uh, command in parentheses. So I just typed a left paren there and our studio, because it's an IDE and other IDEs do this too, um, it automatically put a right paren there too. And then your cursor is sitting there between them. This helps you to keep up with, you know, um, long uh, commands where you have like maybe nest, some nested friends and things like this, but it really helps with um, keeping up with all, with all of that. So that's what you're seeing there. So we're just gonna leave that for a second. And then um, we're going to create another variable uh, called second var, but we're gonna, in, the, in creating that variable, we're gonna use first var um, as one of the, the elements. So go ahead and type second var and your assignment operator, and then first var, and then minus four. And then when you hit enter, you'll see it does the two things that we asked it to do, or it, it puts it in the environment and it returns the, um, the sort of answer, right? The value of what you just assigned to it. Um, so, so I just wanna talk a little bit about uh, vectors. Uh, the most uh, basic R data object is a vector. So you can think of a vector like a row of Excel cells. Um, so if you go into Excel and take your mouse and select either one or more cells, contiguous, um, that could you could think of that as a vector. Eventually, that 
that analogy kind of breaks down, but here, we're right here right now and it works out. So um, there's different kinds of vectors. An atomic vector are um, all of the date, same data type. So if you were to select multiple cells and they were all numbers, say, uh, that would be an atomic vector. Um, and if you selected a number of cells that were not the same data type, you would call that a list. And so a list is a type of vector with that, uh, that contains different data types. Uh, the data types in R are character, double, integer, logical, complex, and raw. Um, I can say I have done a lot of work in R and never used complex or raw. So really the ones you need to worry about, um, at least at the level I'm at at this point, is um, character, double, integer, and logical. And you don't really need to worry about them too much because R kind of handles things um, in the background and, and you don't really need to distinguish say between double and integer, which both of those are numeric types, um, until you do. Like, um, it's it's not a, a huge, um, a huge, like, stumbling block usually. So um, an interesting point is we have already created two vectors. Uh, so, and that would be first bar and second bar. So let's see what data type they are. So we're going to use what's called a function to find out what data type these, these vectors are. So a function is a set of, set of statements organized together to perform a spe specific task. Um, so we need, since we haven't loaded any packages into R, we're in what's called base R. And um, base R comes with a number of functions that come you know, baked in. So one of them is called type of. And then uh, if you put type of and then parentheses and then put in one of those variables, if you hit enter, it tells you it's double. So that's how that works. Um, oh yeah, another thing to know is if you want to know more about um, a, a particular function, you can type a uh, question mark and then the name of the function. And it will open in this bottom right pane in the help uh, file here. And, and it's the R documentation. All the R documentation is um, is uh, arranged similarly. So you'll have the package name here, you'll have the library here. So this is just base, but if you had a package installed, then, and, and that, that function came from that package, it would tell you that. And then it just has all of the, this is a very simple <laughs> function, so it's not probably the best example of what the ARM documentation, uh, how good it is, but <laughs> it's usually pretty good and gets you through. Um, so let's create a variable with multiple members. So I'm going to create one called LH. And I'm going to put in it. Um, a, so a string of numbers that represents all of the project types that let's say like if you're in that project type, that means you're literally homeless. Um, so and if you're familiar with the CSV, uh, the HUD CSV specifications, they have a value uh, that aligns with each project type that exists. Um, so um, if you're not familiar with those, that's okay. You know, you know the project types, I'm sure. Uh, so emergency shelter, for instance, is one, and then transitional housing is two. Um, I'm pretty sure outreach is four, and safe haven is eight. And I think those are the ones. I think those are the only ones that you can say that being in that project type would mean that you're literally homeless, um, or at least on entry. Um, and if you if you notice here, I have used another function without explaining it first, <laughs> um, called C, and that means combine. 
So, um, and you'll see this, you'll use this function a lot. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and create that. And you'll see it shows up here. Oh, let me, is that better, Matt? Is that good? Yeah, I'm, I'm tracking with you. I can see things. All right. Uh, so you have, right, so your, this, va this va variable, no, vector, sorry, um, has four members in it. So let's do some things with that. Let's see if R can tell us the length of that, ve of that vector. So we do length and then LH and it tells us four. Um, so if you do length, can you predict what it would be if we did length and then first variable met? To put you on the spot. I would think, ooh, is it one or two? Because it's two digits, but it's only one like number. So I guess I would say one and yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I think, yeah. That, that was the thought process I had to um, when I was trying to figure this out too. And it's one for sure, yeah. It's one, um, because it's one number. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So good, excellent. Um, so let's create now a, um, a vector that's a list. So I couldn't really think of anything HMIS related um, that made sense or it had to be a list. So anyway, I just went with the idea of signs. So I'm going to do, um, instead of C, I'm going to do 35, 55, stop, yield, and then run that. And you'll see up here, it it, it assigned it and it's a vector now, but it's in a different section. Um, and if you expand it here, you can see that each member of the vector retained its own data type. So, and this will be important because um, when we start building data frames, then this becomes more familiar. So if you were to, Let's see, what did I have? Yeah, let's look at type of signs. So it says list. And um, I think it's because it list is not a data type, right? But it's just saying like, it's a list. So I can't just in one word tell you what the data type of this is. Um, and so then, um, just to demonstrate the difference um, of using list versus C or combine, um, if I did signs um, vector, oh no, let's do atomic, and I did C and then 35, 55, stop, yield. So that's going to do a different thing. And you can see what it did right here is it made all of the members into characters so that the whole vector is character. So the um, basic, oh, wait. Right, right, character. So the basic um, the basic idea here is that we created this um, atomic vector and yeah, and, and so it, it forced those to character. So they all have to be the same. Um, and if you notice there when I messed up on typing and then I just wanted to um, just use the last command that I had um, put in there, but just with an, an edit, I, I use my up arrow. And you can up arrow through your previous commands um, as a way of doing basically what I just did is just to make a little correction. 
So just let me know that truck. Yeah, that's um, handy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the next thing that I have is we're going to create another vector. And this one is going to, we're not going to use C or list. We're going to kind of use um, this sort of Excel-ish um, uh, syntax um, that works in that works in R too. So let's do project types. And we're going to pretend that the project types are uh, 1 through 14. But um, in truth, there is no project type 5 or 6 or 7. I'm pretty sure those are the only ones that don't exist. But we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to say <laughs> um, for the project types are 1 through 14. So if you, if you uh, send that command, you get another vector. And it goes from 1 to 14. And when you use that, it uses integer um, instead of um, double. And I, I don't quite know why, but it tends to not matter. You'll see. I'll, I'll show you soon. OK. So um, Matt, do you have these vectors in your environment? I sure do. OK, good. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to remove one, and then It'll be great. <laughs> so let's do funders and then do a C and then just add some funders. Um, since these, this is going to be a character vector, we're going to use double quotes. You can use single quotes, I think, but I just tend to gravitate towards the double. So if you notice when you're when you're um, typing quotes, it also does the same thing it does with the parens. It, it adds that second one, uh, assuming that that's what you want. Um, you can either arrow past it if you want, if you need to, um, or you can actually type the thing. Like I'm going to type a right paren, and you can see the the cursor just goes right through it, um, so that you're not uh, so, so it's not frustrating. <laughs> um, so it's been, I, I find it to be very nice. And uh, honestly, when I'm in an email or in a Word document and it doesn't do that, I'm, I get I get salty. Um, so funders, we have uh, now three members in the funders um, vector. So and if we did length, funders, see it's three. Um, another thing to note, if I had done this, say, um, and I just accidentally somehow got things got confused and I didn't uh, have that right print on there, or if there was a missing uh, quote, say, or something like this, and then I hit enter, um, R is just like, I'm assuming you're going to be telling me what to do next because you've sent some of a thing that makes sense, but you need to tell me where this ends. So are you going to um, put a right paren right now? Or are you going to put a comma with another funding source and then a right paren? Like, what are you going to do? And so that's why it gives you that plus. So if you're not expecting that plus, it's because you left something out and R is giving you a chance to finish your sentence. <laughs> um, so we're just going to type that, uh, that right paren and send that, and now it did it. So that's, that's a place uh, that people can get tangled up a little bit. Uh, one more function I wanted to let you know. We're not going to be using this um, signs vector going forward. Um, and I, I, want it, I want it out of my environment. So I'm going to do the function called rm, which means remove. And I'm just going to type signs. And then it's gone. So we have six vectors in the environment. So like, what can you do with, with vectors? Um, so well, you can do math with them. So uh, if you were to multiply first var by, say, LH, um, first var times LH, um, Sometimes it's good to think about like, what are we expecting it to do? What do we mean for it to do? Um, so 
I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and see. And it looks like it multiplied the 22 by each number in the uh, LH vector. So that's one thing you can do with vectors and different, you can do a number of, you know, other things. We could go far down that road, but this is just um, surface level syntax stuff. So another thing we're gonna do is um, check for truth. So we can do first of our equals 22. And in R, you need the both equals because um, that that's that's how that's how R is. <laughs> um, it it means equality, right? So if you use a single equal, you are um, basically usually in side of a function and call like calling an argument, like you're using an argument to help the function know what to do or you're um, creating a new thing inside of what you're working on. I don't know, it's, it's different. Um, it doesn't so much mean equality um, to use that single equal sign, um, but the double equal sign means equals, like it means it's equality. <laughs> um, and there are people who, um, are used to other languages that don't use the assignment operator um, and they use the single equals for that. But um, it really is best practice in R at least to use the assignment arrow. Um, so the other, uh, another way to check for truth or falseness. Um, so we're gonna do first of our um, is not equal to 22. So that a not equal to would be a exclamation mark and equal. And then it says false. And of course, all the other ones, they, they're more expected. Um, you can do, um, you know, greater than or equal to these kinds of things. All of those are kind of obvious. Uh, but I definitely want to cover those. Another thing you can do with vectors is you can get to know it better. So if you do summary, um, the summary function, project types. Since this is a numeric vector, it's giving you the min, the max, the median and mean, first quartile, third quartile, um, it'll do that for any numeric vector. So if you did that same um, function on like funders, it just tells you like the length and like that it's a character vector. There's not really a reason you would probably want to do that. Um, another thing you can do is call pieces and parts of them. So if I wanted to, to see like uh, what is the third funder in the list. I could do funders, square brackets, and you notice the interface acts exactly like it does for parens. Um, you could do three and it'll tell you it's HHS. Another cool, very cool, and very useful thing that you can do with vectors is use set diff. So um, let's create another vector called not LH. And we're going to do set diff project types. And LH. So if you notice, I when I'm typing um, vector names, I will type like the first three or four letters of the vector name and then kind of stop and wait for the um, sort of drop down thing to show up. Uh, and then I hit enter and it completes it for me. It's the autocomplete. Um, and the reason I do that is um, 
there are everything in R is is case sensitive, and it, it needs to be just right. And so if you make a typo, then it just causes you that much more stress. So no need to do that. You can use autocomplete as much as possible. Um, so anyway, we're going to create the not LH. And you can see that it, it gives you all of the numbers um, in project types that are um, not represented in the LH vector. And that, that has come in handy for me a, a bunch of times. Like if I'm trying to um, tell the difference, like if I'm looking at one report versus a different report and trying to figure out where, where's the client ID that's not, that's not over here that said, you know, it should be over there. Um, I can just put both, um, both uh, sort of vectors into their own uh, variables and do a set diff on them and it'll tell me which one, like, you know, which clients are not represented. So another thing I wanted to get to is the order in which you run your code is very important. And it's also really important that you name your variables in a descriptive way. So if you remember when we created second var, which is really not a very descriptive <laughs> um, name, but whatever, uh, by subtracting four from first var, which is 22. So what do you think would happen to second var if we overwrite first bar with a different number. So first let's overwrite first bar with a different number. Um, and so, and sort of go through what, like what that means. So we're gonna do first bar and an assignment operator. And um, yeah, I think a thing to know is like, when you assign something to first bar, um, it's not, it's gonna, gonna overwrite whatever else you've ever written to that before. Um, it's not gonna take the 22 and uh, like add it to what you're putting there. It's not gonna do any of that. It's, you're just gonna be overwriting it. Unless you tell it that you want it to keep the 22 and add this other thing to it. But what we're gonna do is just overwrite it. So let's overwrite it with 10. You can see it changing the, the environment, but let's do it the right way. And make sure. Um, so I guess you can look in the environment and tell the answer, but what do you think happened to second var? Um, I guess I would have thought that by updating the first var, the second one would have also been updated, but I did some cheats on my end and it doesn't seem like that's the case, right? Correct, right. So R is very in the here and now in this way. And that's why I say it's really, order, it's important the order that you run your code in. Um, so until you re-run um, the, the second var code, it's gonna just take the last thing you told it as the truth. Um, so you can, you can either arrow through all of your stuff and go back up to where you created second var and rerun that. Or you can just leave it as it is, and it's second var as of you know when you ran it. <laughs> so that's just a thing to know about how R works. If you wanted to create something that was reactive in that way, there are packages and um, ways to, to have that happen. But we are just talking to R right now, and this is a very um, you know it's a very literal place that we're in right now. <laughs> um, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is there a way, so say like there, we had some dependent, uh, well, we created the first var, um, mm -hmm. then we created the second var, which kind of referenced the first. Mm -hmm. um, truly that to get it to play nice, when you update the first part, you do need to update, the, like, is there a way to, to push out like the changes to the first one without redoing the second one? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, so the kind of thing that, you can do is like you could write a function that subtracts four from whatever you put in that function right so like 
um, if you were to create a function So you could do um, minus four um, and then let's do first var right and then we change first var oops to something else oops we'd still have to run that, um, we'd still have to run that again though. Right. Um, but there, so there is reactivity though in the shiny package. Okay. Uh, and in our markdown, you can create um, para, <laughs> parameterize, you, you can put parameters in, uh, in our markdown document. Um, where you know things will react to what you have in there. Okay. But it's just I guess the important thing to know is that um, you know when you're at, when you're coding in R that you have to keep things in order um, of how you mean them, and it is what it is you know until right. you change it. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Seems like the take home is like if you're writing kind of dependent. Um, you know, vectors or, or functions here. If you update one of them, make sure that you probably are careful and, and look at the other pieces that are interacting with it. Is that fair to say? Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. and and if you're if you're naming stuff badly, say, <laughs> um, and then you you don't you forget that you have already created a, a vector, uh, you know, a variable with a particular name, and then you go to reuse that again, and then like you're think you know you've, you're thinking about the other one that you named the same thing like things can get really messy really fast so that's why i put those two con concepts concepts together as naming your stuff well and just paying attention to the order that you're coding things in cool i'm with you yep all right so what i had um planned for it under the if there's enough time was um basically that uh, just sort of an intro to data frames um because all of this is very esoteric when you're talking about like if you know like these things in relation to an actual hmis what we need every day uh, we don't need any of this um maybe set diff <laughs> um in our everyday right but um so data frames though is a totally different thing so we can um r comes with some sample data uh, data frames baked into the language. Um, and one of those is empty cars. And you can you can run that and um, just see what's what's in there. You have the um, cars and then all of the call the, the column names and then all the values like that. And so one thing I was going to show, like class, for instance, you can, um, that's a, a function that you can use on this. And it says data frame. Um, you can do n call 11. So, that, you know, just like we were doing before, um, and if we do summaries, if we remember that one, It'll do, remember how it did for the, the vectors with the, the, the were numeric, it gave us the min, the max, and all of that. So for, for a data frame, it gives us that for every single column, which can be really cool if you're looking at some HMIS data and you're like, you know, sometimes it's interesting to look at the minimum uh, entry date on, in this file. Like I wanna know, that, well, actually the minimum exit date usually is what's interesting to me. But anyway, just you know, to make sure that you've got like you're seeing what you're expecting to see. Um, yeah, so I think I think that's the end of the demo. Um, and I wanted to announce the homework. So we'll get to that. Okay. So basically, 
um, if you just installed our studio, which I know you did, Matt, um, <laughs> then you should see a tutorial tab in your upper right. And when you click on that tab, it's not going to look like this at first. Um, it'll tell you that you need to install the Learn R package. So do that. And then the homework is to do this data basics tutorial. And you can just click that and then go through that tutorial. And um, I'm making that part of the homework because, um, like I said before, I can't teach you all of R. You know, this is something that's going to be an ongoing process. Um, the place that I can offer value is talking about workflow. So, and I think the tutorials tab is a good place to start. It's certainly not all you would need, but it, you know, it's pretty good. So. Okay, cool. I just installed the the Learn R package and um, have it on my to-do list before next Wednesday. Great. Um, right. So, since we're done with the demo and you already installed Learn R, um, you can close out of our studio. And I just want to be clear about this. So since we, oh, this is the wrong, sorry. Since we are, we're just in the, um, the console the whole time, all of these things, it, they're not being saved anywhere except in this history here. Um, and that, that can be saved to, to a document or it can, yeah, there's things you can do with it. Um, but, you know, we're not covering that today. We're going to cover it next week. And the history will still be there. But um, I guess I, I was just wanting to, I think people might feel uncomfortable just closing our studio without like saving anything. Um, but since we are in the console the whole time, there really isn't anything to save. We're going to learn next week about creating and saving scripts and what that should look like. And um, like what like an our, our markdown file would be or whatever. But since we were just doing only like talking to R today, there was none of that. We were just in the console. So all that's to say, you can close your um, <laughs> your R Studio and it will be fine. So I want you to know that. Okay. And the materials, oh, materials are going to be posted. I'm just going to put here. So it's this, this is the link. It's github.com slash Kiazo slash R training. And everything that, um, that was in the handout is going to be right here, like ways to learn R, this recording when it's done. The, uh, our communities and then the homework sort of instructions. And then for week two, you know, I'm just going to keep building on that here. I'm just going to keep everything right there. So um, that is the link that you need. So I think that's it. Um, let me just make sure I didn't. Have, oh, yeah. Um, also, if you are uh, so inclined, they're, they're, um, Ohio, where I work, we have a pandemic fund, um, and that's the link to that. Um, I guess maybe I'll add that to the readme too, to the GitHub um, thing. And then also our um, Columbus Freedom Fund, which bails out local Black Lives Matter uh, protesters, can be found there, and there's a way to donate to that. Um, and next session will be about our studio. So thanks for coming. I'm going to stop the recording now.